Greetings, brothers and sisters. God bless each and every one of you today. I hope everybody's doing well. Again, if you are subscribed to this channel, we are watching for our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Titus 2.13, looking for that blessed hope in the glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. Jesus is coming soon, and we're going to be watching on this channel. Again, we're not going to set dates because we do not know when that day is. But we very clearly see that day approaching, and we will be watching on this channel until the trumpet sounds at the appointed time, and Jesus Christ comes for his church. You know, one of the things I've been talking about and many others is this is one of the craziest election years I've ever seen. I mean, 2020 has been crazy. Right? But these next couple months, September, October, Lord willing, unless the Lord comes first, um, leading up to the U.S. presidential election, all right, I believe the civil unrest, the protests, protests, the riots, I believe these things are going to get even more intense in the next couple of months. Just because, again, we know there's this, this move to make sure Donald Trump does not win the U.S. election. Now, I want to make something clear. No matter who wins, and I've said this before, no matter who wins this election, whether it's Donald Trump or Joe Biden, all right, there's going to be civil unrest in this country, no matter who wins. And this shouldn't surprise any of us. I mean, in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1, the Apostle Paul very clearly says, This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. Guys, you have to remember, things must fall apart. And the old must die, the old world as we know it, for a new world order to rise. And don't forget, as things happen to America, right, it tends to affect the rest of the world. And that's absolutely true. So if you can take down the new, the new world order agenda, if you can take down the United States or weaken it, all right, it makes the, the whole new world agenda much easier. But this ship is sinking, folks. You know, there's a lot of people out there talking about prosperity and how good times are coming. Really? Just look around you. Now, God's in control. All right, so everything's happening perfectly according to his perfect prophetic timeline and plan. But uh, you connect all the dots and this ship is sinking. But absolutely, in order for a new world order to rise, right, the old world must die. And many of you were sending me stuff, and, and I was kind of shrugging it off at first because I didn't know what in the world it was. But I just kept getting comments and emails uh, from those close to me, too. Um, I kept hearing about the White House siege starting on September 17th, and I'm wondering, what in the world is this? I mean, I, I kept seeing it. I kept hearing about it. Um, which is interesting because that's also the eve of Rosh Hashanah, the Feast of Trumpets. Uh, I kind of shrugged it off at first, you know, um, but then I, I started looking more into it. You know, because I know the, the way this year's been so far and the fact that it's an election year and we're, you know, a couple months away right now from the election, that these next couple months, I believe, again, we're going to see an increase in riots, protests, and civil unrest. And again, no matter who wins this election, if there will even be an election, we don't know that, no matter who would win, there's still going to be civil unrest. Um, but anyways, I, I keep here, I kept hearing from others about this White House siege, which is supposed to start on September 17th. I was researching it a little bit and I found, uh, I was actually looking at my friends over at Now the End Begins. They actually had just recently put out an article on it, and I wanted to share it with you guys, titled Anarchist Group Adbusters Calling for a 50-day 50 50 day White House Siege on September 17th, uniting all domestic terror groups for new world order. And again, this is from Adbusters, but I'm going to share with you what my friends over at Now the End Begins uh, just reported on. Hashtag White House Siege will electrify the U.S. election election season, and it doesn't stop there. Drawing wind from Me Too, Black Lives Matter, Extinction Rebellion, and protests against Trump's lethal bungling of coronavirus will inspire a global movement of systematic change, a global spring, a cultural heave toward a true world order. What is our one demand? 
We want to collaborate with you, brainstorm tactics with you, spark a revelation, revolution with you. We will lay siege to the White House and we will sustain it for exactly 50 days. This is the hashtag White House Siege. Uh, so September 17th is when they're planning on starting, running up for 50 days all the way up until the U.S. Uh, presidential election. Let me continue. If you thought that the last four months of watching America's democratic, democratically controlled cities be set on fire, hundreds of millions in damage to minority-owned businesses, women raped, 13 people killed by the Antifa and Black Lives, La Black Lives Matter domestic terror groups was something, just wait until September 17th. That's the day that the basement-dwelling founders of Occupy Wall Street are going to attempt to continue all the anarchist groups and lay siege to the White House for 50 days. They have a better chance of success than you might think. The evil geniuses at Adbusters Anarchist Media have a Hitlerian moment of clarity, and they have seen the future. Combine all these filthy radicals together at the same place, and at the same time, the White House on September 17th, and bring America to a grinding halt? Will it work? Actually, it has a pretty good chance of working because if they do lay siege to the White House, they will have the full support of the Democratic Party, AOC, Nancy Pelosi, Congress, and Democratic VP candidate Kamala Harris, who have all said they support the riots and that they need to continue. Again, hashtag White House siege will electrify the U.S. election season, and it doesn't stop there. It will be a new world order. A global spring. A cultural heave toward a true world order. Wow. So you join all these anarchist groups together. And again, starting September 17th for 50 days, here they have hashtag White House Siege, right? Lasting from September 17th through November 2nd, right? So folks, all I'm trying to share with you here is expect the next couple months leading up until the U.S. midterm elections, especially when they try to join all these anarchist groups together at the White House starting September 17th for 50 days, right? Expect things to heat up again over the next couple months in terms of civil unrest, riots, and protests across this country. Right? Yes, it's, I mean, it's been building up just over the last few months, but I believe it's going to be even more intense in the next couple months here. I had to share this with you about this. I kept hearing about this hashtag White House siege that they're planning starting on September 17th, which again is interesting. It's also the evening of, of Rosh Hashanah, the Feast of Trumpets. And it's going to last for 50 days all the way up until the, uh, the U.S. midterm elections. And they're saying from anarchists, uh, group ad busters own mouth hashtag White House siege will electrify the US election season and it doesn't stop there it will be a new world order but the bottom line folks in order for the old world order or a new world order to rise the old world must die the old world order uh, things must fall apart because remember the Antichrist is going to make order out of chaos after the rapture of the church I believe the rapture of the church itself is the trigger that's going to unleash civil unrest all over this planet, uh, complete chaos and global or uh, worldwide economic collapse. But we're starting to see, you know, the stage getting set up for that now. And again, as things happen to America, it tends to affect the whole world. But yeah, I believe, again, this whole election year has been crazy, but they attempt this White House siege starting on September 17th and flashing for 50 days. Guys, it looks like things are going to heat up even more, Lord willing, you know, like I said, unless the, uh, the Lord comes first before the, the election, which you never know. But absolutely, this ship is sinking. Right? The world views things right now as things are falling apart. But for those of us that know the truth, all right, and we see that day approaching, we know things aren't falling apart. They're falling together perfectly according to God's perfect prophetic plan and timeline. The ship is sinking, absolutely. All right? And in the weeks, days, weeks, and months ahead, Lord willing, all right, again, I believe, especially in America, civil unrest is going to increase as we approach the U.S. midterm election. Um, 
Jesus is coming, and he is coming soon. And if you don't have Jesus Christ in your life, just look around this world right now, folks. You see something's happening? This is all in the Bible. And if you don't have Jesus Christ in your life, I'm imploring you today to get saved right now. Now is the accepted time. Now is the day of salvation. I'm not telling you to go down the street to Father McMuffin, uh, who, who says he can forgive you of your sins. No, no, you have one Father, and he's in heaven, and there is one mediator between God and men, and that is Jesus Christ. You can be saved right here, right now, this very moment. I'm not telling you to get religious. What do you have to do to be saved? The Apostle Paul gives you the gospel of your salvation in the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 15, verse 1 to 4. And this is the gospel of your salvation, that you believe and you're putting your faith and your trust in the shed blood of Jesus Christ on that cross of Calvary. That you believe Jesus is who he says he is, the Son of the living God, him and him alone, no other name. That he's the one that died on that cross for your sins, was buried, and resurrected. He rose from the dead on the third day as it is written in the scriptures. In the book of Romans chapter 10 verse 9 to 10 it records that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. But right here, right now, it's time to repent, to believe the gospel, and to be converted to new life in Jesus Christ today. To repent, that means metanoia. It means a change of mind. You're changing your mind about who God is. You're going from unbelief, dead in your sin, to belief, a new creature in Christ. And again, you're putting your faith and your trust and you're believing in the gospel of your salvation, that Jesus died on that cross for your sins, was buried, and resurrected. He rose from the dead on the third day, as it is written in the scriptures. Now, simply repeating a sinner's prayer, that's not going to save you. Again, simply repeating a sinner's prayer, that is not going to save you. Right? What saves you is what you believe, what you're putting your faith and your trust in, the gospel of your salvation. But I'm going to share with you something that I said years ago that changed everything for me. But again, simply repeating these words after me, that's not going to save you. You have to, to mean it. You have to believe it and put your faith and your trust in it. Pause if you need to. Write it down. Father God, I come before you. I admit to you fully. I confess to you fully. I am guilty before you. I have fallen. I am a sinner. My sin penalty has separated me from you. I ask, Lord Jesus Christ, that you forgive me of my sins, both known and unknown, and that you completely cleanse me of all unrighteousness. I believe with all of my heart, Lord Jesus, that you died on that cross for my sins, that you were buried, and that you resurrected. You rose from the dead on the third day, as it is written in the scriptures, and you're seated at the right hand of the Father. And I pray, Father God, from this day forward that you use me as a vessel, that you use me as a mouthpiece for your purpose and for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. I'm imploring you, get saved today. Become a new creature in Christ Jesus today because tomorrow's not promised. The reality is heaven and hell are very real literal places and you will spend an eternity in one of those destinations. Jesus Christ is the only way to the kingdom of heaven and he's the only name that's going to save you. He loves you. He died for you. But you have free will. So you have to... He's talking at the door of your heart. Let him in because tomorrow is not promised. But yes... There's a full speed train coming called the tribulation period. But just before that train hits, Jesus Christ is going to rapture his church off this planet. And you don't want to be here for what's coming. You think things are bad now? You ain't seen nothing yet. Just go read Revelation chapter 6 or Revelation chapter 19 and look at the judgments that are going to be poured out during this coming tribulation period. So get saved right now. Because the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the Son of God, Jesus Christ, He is coming, and He's coming quickly. God bless you all, and again, keep watching with me.